How far do the electrons go uh, in this little thing you're talking about? They barely move. They probably don't move at all. You think that you're pumping electrons and that you're like buying electrons or something, which is just so wrong. But the kicker is this. Poynting's equation doesn't just work for light. Anytime you have electric and magnetic fields together, there is a flow of energy and you can calculate it using Poynting's vector. Electromagnetic energy is passing through an area per second. And the formula is really pretty simple. It's just a constant, one over mu naught, which is the permeability of free space, times E cross B. Now E cross B is the cross product of the electric and magnetic field. This is known as the pointing vector, and it's given the symbol S. So what this shows us about light is that the energy is flowing perpendicular to both the electric and the magnetic field. And it's in the same direction as the light is traveling. The battery by itself has an electric field, but since no charges are moving, there is no magnetic field, so the battery doesn't lose energy. When the battery is connected into the circuit, its electric field extends through the circuit at the speed of light. This electric field pushes electrons around, so they accumulate on some of the surfaces of the conductors, making them negatively charged, and are depleted elsewhere, leaving their surfaces positively charged. These surface charges create a small electric field inside the wires, causing electrons to drift preferentially in one direction. The charge on the surfaces of the conductors also creates an electric field outside the wires, and the current inside the wires creates a magnetic field outside Consider the wires. Consider subscribing for more in future content. Using the pointing vector, you find that the energy flux only goes one way from the battery to the bulb. So the exact same analysis we used for DC still works for AC. And this explains how energy is able to flow from power plants to homes in power lines. Inside the wires, electrons just oscillate back and forth. Their motion is greatly exaggerated here, but they do not carry the energy. Outside the wires, oscillating electric and magnetic fields travel from the power station to your home. You can use the pointing vector to check that the energy flux is going in one direction. I think to this day, it's quite counterintuitive to think that the energy is flowing through the, the space uh, around the conductor. And people learned this the hard way when they started laying undersea telegraph cables. The first transatlantic cable was laid in 1858. It only worked for about a month. It never worked properly. There are all kinds of distortions when they tried to send it. Enormous amounts of distortion. I mean, they could work it at a few words per minute. What they found was sending signals over such a long distance under the sea, the pulses became distorted and lengthened. It was hard to differentiate dots from dashes. To account for the failure, there was a debate among scientists, like Heaviside and Fitzgerald argued it was the fields around the wires that carried the energy and information. And ultimately, this view proved correct. To insulate and protect the submarine cable, the central copper conductor had been coated in an insulator and then encased in an iron sheath. The iron was only meant to strengthen the cable, but as a good conductor, it interfered with the propagation of electromagnetic fields because it increased the capacitance of the line. This is why today most power lines are suspended high up. Even the damp earth acts as a conductor, so you want a large insulating gap of air to separate the wires from the ground. So what is the answer to our giant circuit light bulb question? Well, after I close the switch, the light bulb will turn on almost instantaneously in roughly one over C seconds. So the correct answer is D. I think a lot of people imagine that the electric field needs to travel from the battery all the way down the wire, which is a light second long, so it should take a second for the bulb to light up. But what we've learned in this video is it's not really what's happening in the wires that matters. It's what happens around the wires. And the electric and magnetic fields can propagate out through space to this light bulb, which is only one meter away, in a few nanoseconds. And so that is the limiting factor for the light bulb turning on.